Hello everyone. In our last two videos, I've shown you two devices. The first one is the D-Link water sensor. You can go to that video right now if you don't have that device set up. In my last video, I showed you how to set up the Wemo Insight switch. Now we're gonna take those two items plus a sump pump and we're gonna show you how to create an automated sump pump for your home. Okay, so let's talk about what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a home automation water sensor, a Wemo switch or another facsimile of that, an if this then that dot com account and the application on an Android or an iPhone device, a string a stringify account on the same platform, and a sump pump that automatically comes on when power is applied. So you don't want to have a button to press or something like that. You want a switch that you can leave on and then have power enter the device and start the pump right away. A lot of sump pumps are this way. They just have to be triggered. Now the setup process today is a bit of a different one so I'm just going to explain it a little bit here. We're going to create an applet to turn on the sump when water is found in the basement. We're going to use if this then that to do that. Then we're going to test that that works just to make sure that the first part of our setup is working correctly. Secondly, we're going to use the Stringify application to create a delay of one minute, five seconds, which you're going to tune in your own home before turning off the pump. Then we're going to test that the whole system works and we're going to check what notifications we're getting and you can tune those over time as well. So as I said, we're going to start with if this then that. Let's head right into there and we're going to search for our D-Link water sensor. Bring that part of the application up. In this case, it happened to show up right away for me, which was nice. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to end up creating a new applet here. Basically, once water is detected, which is the only trigger that the D-Link water sensor allows you to use, once water is detected, I want to go ahead and turn on my Wemo Insight switch. So we're going to go ahead and find that Wemo Insight switch. Now keep in mind, if you don't already have the Wemo Insight switch set up in If This Then That, I have a video for that. I'm going to put it up in the top right corner now. So we're just finishing that applet right there. So now what we have is basement D-Link water sensor detects the water, then we're going to turn on our Wemo sump pump. Now let's test that here. Now there's the water detection in our basement. So we know we're getting good detection and we know we're getting good connection to the if this then that application. Now let's move on to the Stringify portion. Now if you don't have Stringify already and you don't have an application, I'm going to do a separate video for that and that'll be on my channel here relatively soon. It's not actually here today as I, as I give you this video. Now inside of Stringify you have basically two different sections that you're going to be interested in. There's the things side of the application and the flow side. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going through all the different things that can connect with Stringify. It's a lot like if this then that, but what I'm looking for is if this then that. So I'm going to connect if this then that to Stringify because we're going to pass water detection from if this then that into Stringify to allow us access to some different functions that if this then that does not have. Now that I have Stringify connected within if this then that I'm going to create a new a new flow here. Now I'm going to tap on the plus to bring something in to my flow. What I'm going to bring in is if this then that. So what I'm saying is I want a trigger from if this then that to start this flow. And what they do is they auto generate this little code LDJF. That's auto generated by the application and we're going to reference that in if this then that to cause this flow to trigger. I'm going to go ahead and name this flow because what I'm actually doing with this is turning off the sump pump. And now what I'm going to do is add a timer delay. And this was actually the thing 
that caused me to use Stringify in the end. I couldn't actually delay my sump pump turning off. So I'm going to leave it at one minute, five seconds here. I actually, for the purposes of the demo later, I'll adjust that again down to five seconds just so we see it trigger on and off. Now I'm going to re-add another if this then that. So basically, at the end of this flow, I want to push back into if this then that because that's how I'm going to turn off the Wemo Insight switch and therefore turn off my sump pump. So now I've gone and I've enabled my flow. I'm going to go back to if this then that and we're going to create our two applets here that allow us to trigger the stringify flow and then when we exit the stringify flow to actually turn off our Wemo. Now what I'm starting with is my water detection. So again, I'm creating a separate applet here for when we detect water in the basement. What I want to do is trigger my stringify flow, okay? So that's the LDJF, that was the start of our stringify flow. Now when water is detected in the basement, we will start that stringify flow, which we know will go straight into a one minute, five second time delay. And then it will come out the other side with another trigger into if this then that. So we're gonna create another applet. If our stringify flow is triggered, which is the end of that flow, we're then going to turn off our Wemo Insight switch. So there we go. Now we've created two applets here, basically to go into Stringify and to come out of Stringify, all using if this then that, and that's going to allow us out. So now, let's see a demo of that. As I put the sensor in, we're going to notice the water detection. And now we're running our Stringify flow, and we've turned on our sump pump. And now you're going to see we waited just five seconds because I changed the timer, and there's no longer water in the basement, and we've turned off our Stringify flow. Okay. So now you've got an automated sump pump in your home. You're all ready to go. That should be working for years for you. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, anything you'd like to see us tackle here on the show, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. I'll get right to it. We'll see you next time.